Alrighty people, just a quick update here. Um, you're going to believe this one. Barbecue sauce. I'm pretty sure Natvia is owned by Pepsi. Instead of putting sugar in this barbecue sauce, there's stevia. In barbecue sauce. No crap. That's amazing. <laughs> I got one of the best tools that I will get for a while. And, uh, I've been pondering whether to get this and if I'm going to use it enough. And walking around the other day, it was obvious I'm going to need one. Um, got that one there, but you know, that's flame and mains powered. Um, that one came in handy for helping out the brother in law and whatnot. Um, trouble is, you've got to lug around a generator that's about 35 kilos with no wheels. Uh, to get that one to run. So this one, cordless. And quite frankly, using the hole saw there, uh, a bit hard on the drills. If you run the drills in a lower gear, it doesn't really throw the chips out quick enough and clogs up. And if you run it at a faster speed, it sometimes throws the chips out, sometimes doesn't, but then it's too hard for the drill and it overheats and it keeps stalling and stuff like that. So, um, I'm gonna, it's a little blade that come with it, but I'm going to rip that blade out because it's not very big and uh, put in the big monster one here. And I've got a whole stack of other blades I bought as well. Uh, a couple of DeWalt ones there. A couple of Milwaukee, I hope they're long enough. Got some energy drinks. You would not believe the price of this. There you go. That's bigger than your standard Coke can, as you can probably tell by the size of my hand. Uh, it's a 500 mil. The normal Red Bulls and stuff like that are 250 mil. <laughs> These are 25 cents a can. Energy drink. I can't even get fruit juice for that price. <laughs> so there we go. Um, a little porky here. And... Uh, Got myself a bit of hose and the appropriate fittings uh, to, uh, which are hiding up the back there, probably barely seen, uh, to modify this one. Um, so I hope to do this today and by possibly tonight, but at least tomorrow morning, um, go and get this one on the go. And uh, ran out of dye a while ago, so I got some more dye. Uh, so I can spray the top and I'll be able to see what I've got on the top um, if, you know, I go through one tank and run it out. But I'm liable to take both. Uh, well, I've actually got three at the bottom. There's three of these, but one of them's stuffed and the other one's got a bent lance. And, um, yeah, so I'm likely to go down with this full and probably another one um, full bottle as well to do the tops in red and when you change over bottles you don't miss where you run out because you got your red uh, on your leaves and as for big banger there I seem to have a bit of trouble sometimes with the dye in it I got a feeling the dye sort of sticks up the pump a little bit um, and quite frankly you know this thing does not run out quickly um, and as a result I never really need to keep a marker of where I'm up to because I can do the whole plant in one hit and then if I sort of give me butt a bit of a shake I can feel how much I've got left in the tank and if there's not enough left in the tank to do another whole plant I can feel it when I shake me back and then I'll go okay that'll be enough and I'll just come back up um, and this isn't cheap either I mean that's half a litre that's basically the same as one of those cans 25.90 you know <laughs> It's just stuff you want to waste, and I've got a bad tendency of putting it in far more than I, I should anyway. But I mean, you can barely see it on the leaves um, anyway. Even when it dries up the next day, you really got to look at the leaves to see where you got to. But if you've got it on there as you're using it, you know, it's sort of it's all right when it's wet, and when it dries, it just seems to, you know, it's hard to even see when it's on the leaves. But I don't know, it could just be a crappy brand. Um, but anyways, that's what's been going on, and with a bit of luck I'll have this finished and show you the results of it.
Alrighty. I gotta clean that nozzle out a little bit. She's dripping for some bizarre reason. Um, probably just what's from the line from the trigger. But uh, yeah, we got it a fair length. <laughs> Add an extra five meters. That's about the length of a car extra. Um, in that, so. Sort of works alright. I just get a bit of crap in the nozzle. It always happens. Um, so, because this one doesn't really have any decent filters in it, um, you know, can't expect much for ten bucks. So, um, but yeah, build up a bit of pressure. It's a bloody junk. It is really. Sort of flick the nozzle there, she's not too good. <laughs> yeah, here you are with my gloved hand and taking it off with my own gloved hand. Oh, good idea. Yeah, love to shit against the O ring. Let's get that a few flicks. There's a bit of muck in there. Cleared it. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, gives you a nice pattern there. Ooh, the wind's blowing the right way. So, yeah, looks like that's going to be uh, the go. I just hang on to. Uh, that part of the stick there, and I click that in, locked it in, uh, lock it in as I showed in another video, and then off you go, and you cover the whole lot. Uh, still got to add in some dye. It's actually cool enough, but I might go and do some now, uh, and then come back down with the uh, big banger, the electric one, and um, do the swords. Alrighty, well it sort of works all right. Um, so it's from the fact that I bought this for ten bucks six months ago and you know the pressure release starts bubbling a little bit and this fitting here does a little bit. When you build up the pressure, the uh, O-rings and the springs, well, you can't expect much for ten bucks. And uh, I think one of the bigger problems is this piece here. Um, I broke the blooming thing off the little tab but that doesn't matter uh, because it's sort of just the way it's slotted there, to lock it in, you basically slide it on and you push it down and then hook it under and that bit there, that little tab on the back of it there, sort of goes underneath that and as a result it holds the two together and then it locks your black button down but I think the O-ring and that's stuffed as well um, because once you build up pressure, this just keeps dripping slowly the whole time the pressure's on. And as you can see, it's sort of made this a little bit blooming wet. Um, but anyway, you know, I've got one of those with a broken bit of... Uh, stood on it and a bent there. Um, so, but that bit's still good. I've got another one inside, another one of these, the third one, um, that I could butcher that piece off if need be. But the fact of the matter is the majority of what I've got to do, I've just done. You know, so, realistically speaking, I've probably got another... God. <laughs> half hour to maybe 45 minutes worth of work left for it to do. Uh, I don't think it's worth really rebuilding the damn thing. I'll just make do with the issues um, in that last bit of use. If it does get much more use at all, because quite frankly, uh, I built it just primarily for this one job that I've just done in the space of about half an hour with it. Um, 
And some of the other ones are probably just going to be easier to get down with a sabre saw. Um, and yeah, it's likely to get a little bit more use, but you know, it's nothing you'd really get too fussy about with a couple of drips over five bucks worth of poison in the thing that takes you quite a while to get rid of. With these, I didn't end up using the uh, fittings. What I actually done, I had this copper pipe, it's sort of small stuff, um, but it's relatively thick wall on the stuff. So even though it's rather small outside, it's, it's quite damn strong. Very strong, actually. And I don't know what it's off. Probably out of a gas fridge or some bloody thing. Uh, propane fridge or whatever. Anyway, I cut little bits of it and those little pieces fit perfectly up the line. So I get the bit of copper, I stick it inside the black line and then I stick the clear line over the top of the black line and all three of them fit in very tight to each other. Uh, you've actually got to get the end of a screwdriver or something to sort of open up the clear line a bit and you've got to lather the whole lot up with um, dishwashing liquid uh, to get it all to come in together and I mean it's it's takes a few minutes because she's very tight and then to top it off hose clamp over the top of it and the same again with the opposite end and that's worked brilliant sort of funny when you see all the blooming release valve and all these other fittings <laughs> made by the Chinese that are uh, leaking and the two fittings you're done are fine reminds me a little bit of the uh, wood hot water system you know everything I built out of it my father welded up and I designed was all fine and it was the stupid Chinese pump that bloody failed us and that was <laughs> the main trouble but you know this is what you get with Chinese made stuff that you buy for peanuts um, so you can't really expect much for the price you pay for these things but anyway that's worked surprisingly well and um, yeah <laughs> The biggest trouble I had was the fact that sometimes I couldn't see what I was actually spraying at because it was so tall up there and then the sun started shining in my eyes and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, I got the job done and I'm uh, happy I spent 20 bucks worth of pipe and fittings to uh, enhance a $10 thing to do a job that I didn't think um, was going to be very easy any other way. And... Uh, there you go, it's a bit of hillbilly style improvisation with a stick and a few zip ties and and whatnot. Oh, this is nice and big and healthy. It's probably, oh yeah, be about nearly eight foot there. Yeah, it would be. Huge big trunk on the bugger. Oh. Parts of that would be 10 inches. <laughs> and I'll see how we go with a new wonder weapon. Change the blade over. See how we go. Alrighty, like I was saying, she's a pretty big stump. Of uh, you notice it's sort of yellowy looking. That's a poison. Um, <laughs> that's off. That's off. That's off. And that's still stuck because this went flat. Uh, it's getting flipping warm too. It's not 100% flat, but the Makita ones tend to slow up before they go flat. Uh, but anyway, here's uh, that one, that side there. So she's a decent clump of stuff. She all started to lean and I bailed out and then uh, gave it a bit of a shove with a stick and uh, yeah, she went for it. But anyway, these. Uh, they're going to be poisoned rather soon so the plant doesn't seal itself off and then avoid absorbing the poison. So I'll go get the second one of these and hurry up and finish all this off. Um, and then we might go and continue to spray the big patch that we sprayed from above with a normal electric sprayer, which has to be done tonight. Well, reciprocating saw slash saber saw one. Oxthorn. Zero. She worked. Jeez, I reckon the engine must have been getting hot. I wasn't mucking around to see. I was just busy getting on with it, but I reckon she would have been warming up. If any of their drills or anything to go by. Finally got all this cut through. 
only to find that little porky pants here was at the back. So I had to cut a chunk out of the front to get to that one at the back and then finish cutting through this one here, which I sort of come from opposite sides and I ended up with basically two different angles there. Um, God, blimey, this is big. Now I'll give you a bit of a comparison here. So yeah, she more than 10 inches from there to there, I reckon it'd be more like 12 or 13 inches. <laughs> Pretty good for a little battery powered tool, eh? This is one of the ones that I mean, you know, honestly, I mean, this is, that's fallen off there and more or less a couple of inches off the ground and still look way above me head. So this is one I'd either have to do with a spray from above and quite frankly it would have been a bit of an effort to get it with a sprayer um, that I made up today and this one was designated for removal by the reciprocating saw, one of the hardest ones that I'm probably ever going to get it to do. There's another one that's or two that ain't flaming much better than this but they're definitely not worse. Um, but yeah, it was probably one of the biggest one, if not the biggest one, that I've uh, taken on as the first one it's taken on. So I'm pleased with all that. It's not exactly a blooming uh, chainsaw replacement, but uh, for those of you who have watched enough of my box thorn videos, you'll know that I used to get through about six box thorns. Only small ones sometimes, or medium ones. And, uh, yeah, usually only small ones, actually. And after six box thorns, the chainsaw would be blunt. I'd have to go and sharpen the chain again. Um, and, of course, one of the big reasons behind getting a reciprocating saw is the changeable blades. Just chuck them out and get another one. And uh, it's also nice not to have a whole heap of bar oil and smoke and noise and... Uh, hot exhaust that could catch uh, the grass on fire and uh, yeah, I just go down with something like this that doesn't have quite the power but does do the job and um, you know without all the other bits and pieces the smoke and the heat and whatnot because it's battery powered uh, so yeah that I reckon that was a pretty good buy uh, 195 bucks had another one that was 187, it was like a wimpier version or something. And um, originally this is 230. Um, so yeah, I think I done all right getting this. I'm glad I got the 18 volt one because I mean the 18 volt one has enough of a, a struggle uh, attacking the big box thorns and I'm glad I didn't get the 12 volt Milwaukee one because I would not have a hope in hell. Uh, because uh, this is quite an effort to get through this one, but then again, this is probably the biggest it's ever going to attack anyway.